Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. What you just saw was FT8 on an HT. Yeah, I'm scratching my head on that one a little bit too. It is the Quanchang UVK5 with an HF board mod installed into it. This one comes from my friend Doc Brad, and he gave it to me at Huntsville Hamfest, and I just got a chance to play with it. What I'm using is the APRS K2 cable from BTEC, and it is plugged into one of those USB-C audio chip things that you get from Walmart and run an FT8CN. I did a video on FT8CN a while back. It is a fantastic little program for running FT8 with any radio that you can plug into it. That part's on you. In this case, I used that K1 cable and here we are. Let's talk a little bit more about this HF mod. We'll get into the insides in a bit, but I wanted to go over some real quick things. Got the CEC 0.5 HF firmware in it, and this is from our friend over at hamski.com. There'll be a link in the description down below for that. On the surface, this is an ordinary 2 meter 440 Quanchang UVK5 radio, but down inside is where it gets to be a little bit interesting. And we'll just get right to it. You already know what a K5 does, but this is what this HF mod does. Hit the F key and then hit FM, and it's gonna say wait. And now we're in HF mode. If you long press the function key, it's gonna let you switch modes between AM, USB, which it's on now, CW, LSB, and we wanna be on USB for this, obviously, since it's FT8. And then these keys over here move you up and down in 10 kilohertz steps or something along those lines. So you can't press the one or the four key, but if you press any one of the other numbers, you can go into direct frequency entry mode. So one, four, oh, seven, four. And that sounds a lot like FT8. This is an interesting radio because it doesn't have your typical crystal inside of it. So it works a little bit weird. You can hear it kind of wobble a bit, warble a bit, but it gets the job done. The phone will decode FT8. And this is a good thing to play with out in the field. You can find these radios for about $17 or so, and there are a ton of functions that this adds to it. You cannot transmit on HF bands, but you can receive with this mod. And then there is a close-up of some of the stations that I had decoded when I had it plugged in. If we take a look at the website, they've changed some of the buttons. So the select menu, is still the same. Change frequency is there. Change frequency in 10 megahertz units is the one in four key like I was talking about. Start direct input of frequency by pushing any of the other number keys. Change the frequency step by pushing the star. Change the band plan by pressing zero. And then change the mode by long pressing or by short pressing once you've got it into mode change mode. All right, I have not taken one of these apart before, so this is gonna be fun. Let's, uh, let's start by pulling the knobs off. And this is not like the Baofeng, where there is a little knob there to take your antenna port off. However, I have a Baofeng that I can probably use to do that. Let's take a look. Oh, it feels like it's different. It looks like it's not different. It just feels like it is different. Yeah, that is not fitting in there. Looks like it's under the plastic anyway. So I'm going to try without removing the antenna port first. And being under the plastic might be why I'm having trouble with it. That might be what's interfering. All right, somewhere down here on the bottom, it looks like there is a spot for a screwdriver to go in. Let's try that. Pop that right up, nice. Yeah, that antenna did not need to be removed yet. Nope, didn't need to be removed. Nice. Those look like port covers. Yep, they go right there. That just kind of fell right out. But that's it, that's a little tiny bit of a radio. And right here is the modification. And it is some tiny little stuff. You need to remove the main chip of the radio and then install this secondary circuit board in its place. 
and there's supposed to be some capacitors and some inductors, but I don't see the inductor because the inductor was pretty big. But there is, it's hard to tell because there is a green circuit board outline. Let me see if I can point to it with something a little bit better than my finger. There's a green circuit board outline right through here. And I'll put a picture of it on the screen for you. And then there is a couple of other parts, some surface mount parts. And these are some tiny little parts that need to be removed. But that's it. That little circuit board there is pretty much all there is to the radio. The rest of it is heat sink and human interface service to make it so you can actually hold it in your hand. There you go. Let's get this thing put back together. And I yanked the speaker off. I have to fix that. So be gentle when you're taking this thing out to not yank the speaker off. Luckily, I have a soldering iron. It doesn't have enough power from the power supply I'm using. Hang on. There we go. Now I've got the right USB port. This thing warms up pretty quick and there's already enough solder on this to get the job done. I am not left-handed. Let's try upside down did. There we go. Feel a little less useless doing it with the proper hand. But the place where you put the speaker on is labeled SP, so it makes it pretty easy. Now, can we make sure that works? Where is the powers up top? It's on 146.52. KM9. Yep. K, 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 K. That works, let's get it put back together. It's pretty cool seeing all the lights lit up like that. And before we put it back together, let's check the, uh, the Baofeng retaining screw on the antenna port. Yeah, that does work. And I bet that goes on the outside. I'm gonna put that on the outside. That way my life is more difficult in the future when I do this the next time. Now let's take the battery off before I electrocute myself. Snap, snap. Sounds like it's gonna break. <laughs> See, every ham shack needs a Balfang. And the Balfang knob actually looks like it will fit. Oh, it will. That looks weird. There you go. Buy the Balfang, get the knob, put it on your Quan Chang. Love life. Huh, this is a completely different Quan Chang and its retaining screw is underneath as well. I guess I'll put it back underneath if this doesn't work out. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the antenna's a SMA female, so it'll fit in there. Yeah, it'll be fine. We'll leave it like that for now. Oh, <laughs> and I forgot the cover for the ports. Snap. That's either very satisfying to hear or very terrifying to hear. Hey, it still works. If you are a shortwave listener, the fun doesn't stop with FT8. Not only can you decode FT8 and other digital modes with this with the right cables and software, you can also use this to listen to your favorite shortwave stations. Is this gonna be better than, say, a C-Crane or any one of those other little importable shortwave listening radios? I don't know. But for 17 bucks, it's hard to beat. Well, that wraps this one up. There is Plenty of information in the description down below where you can get some more stuff to do with this radio. And there is a video right over here I think you'll enjoy next. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.